Hi friends, we go for Yojana Union Budget 2023-24. In that the article is Skills, Employment, human, and Human Resources Development. In this we have this paragraph 1, so paragraph 2 <coughs> and paragraph 3. And paragraph 1 speaks about the recent aspect of jobs and its evolution. So as per World Economic Forum, 2020 report so what the information it says is uh, so regarding this job there are two major shifts happened that is labor shift so what they found out is one is in the aspect of automation simple to understand automation is use of machines in work process that's called automation so great example of automation is right now there are a lot of talks about the concept like driverless cars these are good examples of automation. So, automation is one. The next one is economic uncertainty. Economic uncertainty. <coughs> so, this was the reference about Corona they are speaking about. And what the impact is uh, because of this two reasons. There is a loss of 85 million jobs is being displaced. And another data is 97 million new jobs being created it's 91 new million jobs created by 2025 so this is what the data says as per this report it's is found out that 85 million jobs is lost because of these two reasons and 97 million new jobs being created and so that comes the necessity for new workforce <coughs> so to be and a part of this new workforce if simple to say that if you want to get an employment what this uh, point says is so there should be more focus on agile, adaptable, agile, adaptable, and upskill. So any employee need to focus on these three aspects. One is you should be more adaptable to the changing requirements and also ready to learn a lot of new things. That's agile and also upskill. You need to uh, go move to the next level so that you get the employment, especially under this 97 million new jobs. Okay, that is going in paragraph one and paragraph two speaks about the Indian population so India has the largest youth population so largest youth population that is around 66 percentage of Indian population is youth if you want to put in numbers that is 808 million and what constitute youth is below 35 years so around out of 100 people around 66 people are below 35 years in India that's given here this also said that uh, Indian workforce to grow, grow 8 million per annum. So, 1 million is around 10 lakhs, around 80 lakhs people are going to be added every year into the workforce. That the data is given. So, it's going to be, India is going to have a lot of youthful population for work. And paragraph 3 <coughs> says about the current status of job market, around 50 percentage of undergraduated engineers. So, undergraduate engineering capacity lies unutilized. So, seats are not uh, filling in colleges, unutilized capacities and also low return on investments of time and money. So, the primary reasons why people are not focusing on is uh, low return on investments. Return on investment is both time and money. So, what people feel is if they study engineering, so what in return they are getting, they are very minimal. And there comes the need to focus on uh, skill development and vocational education. And if you want to understand very common way of understanding vocational education is uh, like uh, plumbing and all those things, all elect uh, electrical job, all these things come to electrical grade, all comes under this concept. Okay, that is given in this page. So paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and paragraph four. So in paragraph one, it speaks about new education policy, 2020. So so, new education policy want to rework all our educational system and they have primarily focused on creation of national higher education qualification framework. So, national higher education qualification framework and uh, they are primarily focused on collaborating or coordinating with so national skill qualification framework. So, this primary reason of this a point is it clearly highlights the importance of addressing the previous pages problems 
So right now new education policy is creating this. So that is given in uh, paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So the vision is to make India skill capital of the world. India a skill capital of the world. That is a primary intention of the government skill capital of the world. And uh, so here we can see that uh, focusing on s speeding this process to achieve in larger scale and also standardization. So this is the primary focus of the government to achieve the skill development and for that they are going to use various states, central governments and public sector organization, public private organizations, union government, state government and private organizations is going to play the lead role in this. That is going in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3. So right now in higher education especially in budget for higher education there is increase of 8 percentage and another most important fact is and 85 percentage primarily goes for skill development. So this we can relate with the previous point. So as government is trying to make India as a skill developed or uh, make India as a skill capital of the world. So in higher education lot of money is focused on skill development. Okay. So that is good in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4. So the schemes right now focused on that thing is uh, so Pratan Mandri, Kausal Kendra and Jan Shikshan Sanstan, Jan Shikshan Sanstan and National Institute for of Electronics and Information Technology, Electronics and Information Technology. So these are all primarily focused on creating skill ecosystem, focusing on creating skill ecosystem. So that is given on this page and uh, apart from this uh, industry 4.0 and automation will create lot of new opportunities that is given there that is industrial revolution 4.0 on automation automation so creating new jobs creating new jobs next we go for paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 and uh, so they say that uh, because of industrial revolution and automation robots are going to play a major role and that is the first two lines of it so in paragraph 1 so government has in introduced especially union government has introduced 30 India's international skill centers India's international skill centers and uh, especially to learn global skills. So what is skill required at global level so government is creating this th uh, 30 India international skill centers so people can learn in that and next one also this focus on paragraph 2 focus on so Pratan Mandri. Vikas. So, Vikas is uh, Vishwakarma, Kaushal, Samman. So, especially focusing on traditional artisans, traditional artisans and craftspersons, craftspeople. So, they have primarily focused on improving the quality scale, quality scale and reach of their products. This is all rel related to traditional skills. So right now government is also promoting this traditional skills. For that they have created a program called PM Vikas. Whereas paragraph 3 speaks about so a theme called uh, so Deko Apna Desh especially job and tourism sector. So, so for youth for youth they are focusing on job and tourism sector tourism sector that speaks about this paragraph 3 which is also required a skill in uh, hospitality and paragraph 4 so it speaks about this uh, national apprentice training scheme where 400 crores is allocated by the government and uh, especially focusing on uh, equipping technically qualified youth with skills and also they have the sangalp that is skill acquisition sangalp skill acquisition and knowledge awareness for livelihood promotions and also they have this strive that is a skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement and primarily all focus on skill development primarily focused on skill development so that is the power focus of it so that is going in paragraph 4 next paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 it speaks about the district institute of education training properly called as diet and uh, they are going to focus on transforming diet as center of excellence center of excellence 
to make teachers that is primary focus to train teachers to make them 21st century ready 21st century ready teachers so they are going to change all these things in diet institutions so they are going to focus on ICT so in a way to pedagogy that is a way of teaching children so what government is saying by uh, thinking is to make a uh, person skilled and innovative it needs to start from schools for that they need to focus on teachers that is the point given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks about Pratan Mandri Kausal Vikas Yojana so it is primarily focused on uh, skilled workforce skilled workforce and so they are pri they are focusing on new age skills new age skills such as coding AI robotics robotics and uh, 3d printing drones etc so they are going to focus on this under this Pradhan Mandri Kausal Vikas Yojana whereas in paragraph 3 focuses on primarily that is they given the year of 2025 around 50 percentage of school students school and higher education exposed to vocational education so they are saying that uh, they are going to focus on vocational education again developing skills for the individuals that is given in paragraph 3 and as education is a concurrent list so there should be effective cooperation this is another point this can be from Plum's point of view education is a concurrent list so what is concurrent list is it is parts of the it is part of the constitution in constitution there is schedule called seven schedule which says what is the power of union government and state government in legislative matters so education is a concurrent list which means both union government and state government can work so as education is a concurrent list any transformation education should be a coordinated effort between union government and state government both need to work that is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 speaks about uh, the importance of agility critical reasoning agility critical reasoning creative thinking so this is all required for individuals and resilience for modern day era challenges and especially to use all the new technologies what we have listed out like AI robotics 3D printing all this required this aspects and uh, so that is the requirement for youth this is the requirement of youth of the country and one is uh, so as India want to become 5 trillion economy by 2025 so skill development is the primary requirement so India's target of 2025 that is we want to become a US dollar 5 trillion economy to achieve this we want to do primarily focused on skill development so next article is uh, Sabka Sat and Sabka Vikas through union budget so that we go for this paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 it speaks about the concept of inclusive development so what is inclusive development is primarily focused on social dimensions in any society there will be always a social hierarchy or social divide so any country's government's primary focus is focusing on inclusive development that is given here so inclusive development is primarily focused on marginalized sections focused on marginalized sections and uh, excluded groups so who constitute all, all this aspect is it is primarily focused on SC, STs, women in India so that is the group they call it as so this all focus on India's development that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 it speaks about women so in that they focus on gender budgeting so gender budgeting is part of inclusive development so gender budgeting is focusing on women in development so gender budgeting is a tool right now used by the government in every budget to showcase in every ministries what are the schemes created for women so that is a part of this that is given in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 why we need to focus on women they are given some reasons for it that is 48 percentage of Indian population so 48 percentage of Indian population is women so there should be always women centric development that, that is given and uh, mostly women can lack in all these so they have lack of opportunities women lack opportunities in the aspect of health education health education economic opportunities etc this we can see in most of our families where women are being denied these opportunities take example of education in any family a male child is always prefer for professional education when compared with the female 
and similarly health aspect you can see that nutrition primarily in any family in any Indian family especially conservative families nutritional opportunities are very high for male when compared with the female this is all part of this so that is uh, the reason why we need to focus on them next thing is so paragraph 4 speaks about the concept of upskilling so this we already saw in the previous uh, article that is 30 international centers so international centers were created in India for upskilling the people so that is given in paragraph 4 so paragraph 1 2 3 4 and 5 so in paragraph 1 so right now they speak about women's development that Mahila summon saving certificate so Mahila this opportunity is given for women in India summon saving certificate so as per the certificate what is the normus so maximum of 2 lakhs so maximum 2 lakhs can be given in the name of women and tenure is for 2 years 2 years and interest rate is around 7.5 percentage so fixed interest is given by the government so and also partial withdrawal partial withdrawal so this is creating economic opportunities for women and uh, especially they should be in the name of a women and these are the conditions given for this particular certificate so this encourages women to save more money in financial systems because compared to the open market the interest rates are high so women can also get recognition in the family because on their name money is being deposited so that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks about uh, MIS accounts this MIS accounts can be opened by individual and also jointly by three adults or guardians or on behalf of the minor okay so this is again related to minors minor especially by guardian guardian or single individual single and what they have said is uh, interest rate is given 7.1 percentage per annum and also investment in multiples of 1000 and interest rate is interest rate is 7.1 percentage so this is another scheme especially focusing on weaker section par given in paragraph 2 paragraph 3 they speak about the importance of cooperative sector so cooperative sector and this is where we can see especially in rural areas and weaker sections are playing a major role in it and weaker section includes women SC, ST is all part of cooperative systems so government is giving greater trust that is given in pa paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 speaks about the importance of green growth green economy green infrastructures that is green growth economy infrastructures so this again related with the people who mostly depend upon nature for their living it can relate with the ST populations that is given in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 it speaks about Pradhan Mandri Kausal Vikas Yojana which we already saw where government is pri primarily focused on new skills for youth in like AI robotics the so government is focusing on this that is given in paragraph 5 so paragraph 6 and paragraph 7 so regarding this paragraph 6 regarding green growth so what are being done that is given in paragraph 6 so they are primarily focused on uh, reducing carbon footprint or carbon intensity of the government that is the reason why we can see that government is focusing a lot on solar energy nuclear energy that is the primary reason and for that also we can see that government has focused on this new green hydrogen mission national green hydrogen mission which already saw in the previous article correct and also focusing on EV vehicles and they are also focusing on uh, batteries manufacturing of batteries so manufacturing of batteries for EV vehicles is encouraged by the government that is given in paragraph 6 and paragraph 7 focuses on agriculture accelerator fund and especially to focus on rural entrepreneurship agricultural accelerator fund primarily focused on rural youth for startups so that is given in paragraph 7
The next article is fiscal deficit policy shift and sustainable development. So if we have this paragraph 1, so paragraph 2, 3 and paragraph 4. In paragraph 1, it speaks about the impact of uh, budget and fiscal deficit and capital, capital expenditure. So any country's economic well-being is focused on these factors that is so based on budget so budget is one important indicator apart from this we need to focus on fiscal deficit fiscal deficit and next one is capital expenditure so all this need to be combined to understand the impact on economy and uh, and this all related with fiscal discipline and fiscal consolidation we will see all these things what is fiscal discipline and fiscal consolidation is so our paragraph 2 speaks about the concept of fiscal deficit fiscal deficit is primarily focused on borrowings so if you understand fiscal deficit how much we borrow for our development that's called fiscal deficit very co common man understanding so it's primarily focused on current needs by borrowing what you are going to focus on is current needs and future liabilities future liability this balancing is called fiscal deficit as you cannot fund all the projects with the current money you need to focus on borrowing but in what cost that borrowing is focused on is that based on future liabilities when you're going to build upon future liabilities that should be always finding a right path for that so that's related to fiscal deficit and what are data for fiscal deficit is uh, as per the budget of the financial year for 2022-23 so right now this is the budget for 2023-24 fiscal deficit is given in the range of 6.4 percentage and 5.9 percentage right now we can see that fiscal deficit is reducing and government is trying to find the right balance here and what are the reason for this thing is why fiscal deficit is uh, in, uh, having an impact is so the reason is one is post covid so covid has an impact on this borrowings and global headwinds global headwinds are a lot of economies in the world are not doing great so that has an impact and russia ukraine war so russia ukraine war so this has an impact on there and also other geopolitical tensions so this all has an impact on economy especially fiscal deficit that's given there and uh, and what the statement says is 5.9 is not great higher physical deficit for a country like India okay. whereas paragraph 4 speaks about where this fiscal deficit where the borrowings are being spent so primarily they focused on uh, uh, governments must spend on investments and welfare schemes that is investments investment is primarily focused on creating infrastructures and welfare schemes investments and welfare schemes and which creates in faster income faster income for people apart from faster income it also creates greater output employment so these are the reasons why we need to focus on it and uh, as per this frbm act what is frbm is fiscal responsibility and budget management act 2003 there's a target under this act which says that fiscal deficit should be fiscal deficit should be three percentage of GDP but the current number is around 5.9 percentage the reason is given here why it should we need to focus on 5.9 okay so paragraph 1 next one so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 so in paragraph 1 we already saw about this FRBM act as it's a three percentage 3.3 uh, 3 should be their fiscal deficit well, for the la last 20 years and why why it's not being done is uh, so primary reason is it is given in the paragraph 1 that is government is focusing on spending on capital expenditures so capital expenditures that values around uh, very close to 10 lakh crore so where you need to compromise on fiscal deficit 10 lakh crore is being spent and this is 33 percentage higher than the previous year and also it's around 3 percentage of GDP so this where government need to spend 
and overall if you calculate all this uh, aspects it is around 4.5 percentage of GDP with other expenditures combined and also 13 lakh crore. 13 lakh crore expenditure includes along with capital expenditure and other expenditures. So, this clearly shows that uh, for last two years there is no economic activity revenue sources for the government is less, but at the same time government is spending lot of money for these areas capital expenditures. It has a multiplier effect on the system. So, that government is ready to take the risk of borrowing money and investing in the economy. So, that it has an impact on output employment all these things that is the risk government is taking right now that is given in paragraph 1. So, next one is paragraph 2. So, where this focus is primarily focused on infrastructures and which are the infrastructures government is spending lot of money is power, transport, power transport, railways. So, why government is focusing on these sectors because it has an impact on GDP, employment, so, GDP is gross domestic pro, uh, pro, uh, product, employment and output. So, that is the reason why government calculately spending money on these aspects okay. and this has an impact on uh, once it has an impact on these dimensions direct impact and also it uh, increases private investments, increases private investments. Once these infrastructures are being developed private investments will pour in. So, that we can clearly understand. For example, if you are creating railway networks across India, we can see that it in, in, encourages trade for that lot of private investment happens. So, the increase in private investments that is the primary aspect of it. For that only a lot of policies and schemes are being created that is being highlighted here. One is regarding PM Gati Shakti. This is a scheme focusing on uh, logistics and infrastructure development and uh, national logistic policy national logistic policy logistic policy the next one is uh, production linked incentive schemes so so these are being strengthened by the government so that it enhances the economic activity that is going in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 speaks about revenue deficit so revenue deficit so revenue deficit is another term so revenue deficit is primarily to understand if revenue expenditure is high there is a revenue deficit for it. So, revenue expenditures are high. So, revenue deficits will be there and as per the data of the government for financial year 2022-23 and financial year 2023-24. So, the data are being given us one is uh, 3.8 percentage and is 2.9 percentage. So, that is a revenue deficit uh, given there. And revenue deficits primarily what is the revenue expenditure primarily focused on is regarding subsidies. So, what is subsidies to understand in common terms is there are certain products and services where there is a market price, but for common man what government says is they need to pay some money for it where government will give other part of the money. Good example is LPG cylinders that is called subsidy and most of the revenue expenditure is concentrated in subsidies. Apart from subsidies they are also focusing on uh, uh, welfare schemes, welfare schemes these are the major impact um, uh, contributor for revenue revenue expenditures. Whereas, paragraph 4 speaks about the importance of uh, reducing revenue expenditures uh, how this can be done is primarily focused on taxes to reduce revenue deficit primarily focus on increasing taxes, increasing taxes and also increasing tax base. Tax base is nothing but asking more people to pay the taxes and that that is primarily focused on uh, uh, tax administration. Apart from this also rationalizing, rationalizing expenditures. What is the rationalizing expenditure means government need to identify which are the most important expenditures which are not required that need to be removed that is called rationalizing expenditure. Based on this revenue deficits can be achieved. Next paragraph 1 and paragraph 2. So, paragraph 1 again the same point is given by this expenditure reforms commission expenditure reforms commission that what we discussed right now to rationalize our expenditure. So, rationalize expenditure. So, that is what the point they say that so that government's expenditures are minimized. 
which is considered to be unrequired. So, that is called recent debate on freebies is a good example on this rationalizing expenditures and uh, that will help in preventing uh, brings in efficiency increased efficiency increased efficiency of ex fund allocation then apart from this it also has prevents leakages. So, so the, this is all the way to enhance the efficiency of government expenditure that is going in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks about the ratios revenue receipts to revenue ratio. So, when the, whenever this number is high this clearly shows that expenditures of the government is very high. So, there comes the importance of rationalizing. So, these are some of the uh, indicators for the government what need to be done. So, revenue expenditure we saw what is revenue receipts it is nothing but taxes. When taxes are low when compared with the expenditures we need to rationalize the expenditure that is given in this paragraph 2 and paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 and paragraph 1 speaks about this capital expenditure and higher capital expenditure results in greater push to the economy because of private investments higher capital expenditure which is always being encouraged by the system higher capital expenditure what are the benefit is increased private investments private investments and multiplier effect. So, that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 speaks about this capital expenditure to fiscal deficit that is capital expenditure to fiscal deficit. So, this is another indicator. So, fiscal deficit is a borrowing get by the government for investments and what is that percentage of capital expenditure? When you get money and create new assets that is always advisable for the system. So, that is a requirement of the government and that is what given here. So, now projected that 56.0 which is clearly reflect positive intent outlook of the government. So, the number is around 56.0 which clearly, no, clearly identified that uh, out of 100 rupees being borrowed 56 rupees spent on capital expenditure which is always good for the system that is going in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 speaks about tax to GDP ratio tax to GDP ratio this is related to tax base tax to GDP ratio. So, right now it is more than 10 percentage but for the financial year of 2023 24 it is going to be 11 percentage. So, what this number indicates is what GDP is the total value of the economy and what are the tax we are getting out of it. So, this clearly shows that what are the products and services being taxed and also how many people are paying the taxes. This all contribute to this ratio. The higher the ratio, so which clearly shows that uh, it is a good, it is a system is running in the right path. Where when taxes collection is low when compared with the GDP which need to be improved. So, right now they are saying that by this financial year it will be around 11 percentage. So, India is moving that right direction and finally, paragraph 4. So, so primary requirement is to reduce deficit to reduce deficit which includes both fiscal deficit and revenue deficit and that is called fiscal consolidation. So, government is moving towards this fiscal consolidation fiscal consolidation. Then apart from this uh, higher capital expenditure spending results in that is creating capital expenditure primarily focused on capital expenditure primarily focused on creating employment increasing investments with, with investments what happens is increased in employment increased employment and growth. But the ultimate objective of government is to achieve this 4 I that is infrastructure through budget investment, innovation, innovation and inclusion. So, that is the primary focus of the government. Thank you.